Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different than my usual videos. Um, so, if you don't know what D&D is, uh, it's a kind of like tabletop role-playing game. You make a character, uh, you throw like dice to see if you do stuff, basically. Uh, if you don't know, I'm a massive fan. I think I did like mention it a couple times in like other videos. But uh, part of me wanted to like kind of just, you know, just because I didn't have really a big video idea and I didn't want to just play Dark Souls again. I kind of want to take like a break, so I kind of did three straight uh, kind of, uh, you know, videos about Dark Souls. So I thought, hey, why not, you know, make a DD and d video about the Lost Mines of Foundelva. If you don't know what the Lost Mines of Foundelva is, it's kind of like the starter kit. Um, well, it's, it is essentially just the starter kit. Uh, which is it's pretty good for if you want to like kind of like see if you're good at DMing for the price probably not unless you get it for like a birthday present or a Christmas present um, but it can be like set of dice and stuff I'd say the essentials kit has a lot of stuff for the DM but it's kind of more better for I'd say kind of like the player even though the essentials kit comes with a DM screen and like you know some cards and stuff, it also comes with like basic manual to make a character. Anyway, and in the start kit comes with a pre-made story called The Lost Minds of Delver. Now, in lockdown, me, my dad, and my brother were really bored, so we decided to play it. Uh, and this is just me kind of like telling you about the campaign. This is going to be the first part. I'm Mike. 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 Like post the next part tomorrow, so. But, uh, yeah, just some stories. But how it like starts, I don't really like. So, basically, it starts with just the players already kind of hired by a dwarf named Gundar, and that's kind of what all you say. So they're they're on a car hired by Gundar. Uh, so basically, the premise is that Gundar has hired them to like guard some supplies that. Uh, he is taking to Fandelvalin. Fandelvalin? I can never pronounce it. Uh, he's already gone though on one cart because there's too many supplies and it had to be like half on one cart, half on another. He's already gone on one cart with a uh, with a bodyguard with him called Sildar. I, I generally think he's called Sildar unless I'm reading it wrong. Unless I read it wrong, it's called Sildar. And I don't know why it's called Sildar. He's just called Sildar. No, no clue why, just absolutely no clue. But they only went, and so basically, the players, which one is my dad called um, Garfinkel, a, an elf or a half, a half elf, I don't really know. Uh, but one called uh, Garfinkel, which I'm going to be referring to it as, and one called, and one my brother, who's also an elf. Called Red Arrow. I'm gonna tell you why them being an elf uh, got surprisingly just a little game breaking uh, in just one section, which is the beginning section. But anyway, so they arrive on this like little steep path and stuff, and the driver like stops his car. To which I go, oh yeah, he says, oh there's something on the road. So obviously Garfinkel uh, says, oh I'll check it out. Goes off and you know goes looks at. Whilst Red Arrow kind of stays and like makes sure nothing happens, and as he goes off, it's it's a basic kind of like encounter. But it basically, what happens is that you know he goes, "Oh, okay." It's like, "What is it?" It's like, "Oh, you see two dead horses and like a broken car." And he's like, "Oh, gonna expect it, inspect it then." It's like, ah, okay, it's this, and I go, "Oh, it has you know similar stuff to your car in the wreckage. It nothing's there, just similar wreckage," uh, and then like. It doesn't say this, but like apparently it's supposed to be like the same car cart as a player. It's you know Gundar's cart that's kind of been like you know wrecked and total. So like it's not kind of like you can. I don't know how clear other people make it. I just so basically I said oh there's like a brand basically or something that's like similar to yours. And they click on so as Gundar is go Gundar as Garfinkel is gonna go back to the thing. I tell him how 
from an arrow kind of like just mysticism and same with red arrow as a bunch of goblins come out i did four goblins i, I think you're supposed to do six though it depends on how, how like you know your party but this encounter this beginning encounter was one of the most stressful encounters i think i've ever done and that's saying something considering again it's the starter kit and stuff what happened was is so i did it where there's one main you know goblin a leader goblin and there's three other little goblins whilst garfinkel was like fighting a little goblin i was like oh okay this is gonna be like you know i just imagine like oh lord of rings kind of thing where like you know arrows are flying and, like you know but as like a little like encounter so i go oh, okay right. give like the head goblin he has a couple of javelins i i think i gave them like two and like a bow and arrow and a you know, sword so he's gonna you know try and fire at garfinkel he misses, he gets a nat 1, and you're thinking, oh, okay, that's kind of funny, you know, the DM for his first roll gets a nat 1, and I, like, and I describe, okay, it almost hits the little, like, the, the grunt goblin, you know, fine, da 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 stuff happens. Back to the, you know, boss, the goblin boss's turn again. Same thing happens, I'm not even joking, another nat 1. I'm playing with the goddamn friggin', like, starter kit dice. They give you a dice set. They're over here. Look, they got in a little baggy. Um, in a sec. Let me roll. I'm in a little baggy. I have no where to spend. What? Come on. What? Like what? Would... Okay, it's a sixteen. That's surprising. Uh, but I got that one again. To which I go. Ugh. Right. He misses and almost shoots the goblin again. You know, it's kind of funny, not gonna lie, just imagining this, like, goblins like, lying up and keep on acting and shooting his men. Everything go goes again. Back to him. Would you believe it? Another nat one. Wow. Who would have thought it? To which Garfinkel, Red Arrow, and me was like, huh. At this point, like, the grunt has got to, like, at least, like, suspect he's trying to kill him. So, like, Either now at how like, but the two goblins are now fighting, to which Garfinkel takes advantage of this and kills all, like the grunt goblin, and you know it starts charging to the um, to, you know the boss goblin goes all the way back around. Wouldn't you know it? I finally get a decent hit. Do you know how much damage it does? Zero, not zero. One, one damage. Pretty cool. Okay, that's cool. Meanwhile, like you know. With Red Arrow, like, I did the exact same thing. It's actually, like, not getting that one. It's still missing. But at least it's, like, at least it's, like, you know, oh, like, he rolls that much just under his, you know, armor. To which, like, I go, oh, okay, you, like, swiftly dodge it as you, like, you're, like, Parasara Cow Beard, you know, the, 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 the thing, whether well, on the mass. At least it's, it's like that. Anyway, so they kill the goblins. And what happens is, like, okay, okay, you find this, like, really crappy map leading to a hideout. This hideout. This this hideout. Okay. Is where everything goes wrong. <laughs> On the beginning bit. So, here's a map. I'll just place a map there. So, <laughs> basically, what happens is... Is that the entrance has like this little stream of water down it. There's like a little goblin guard too. They easily kill that. I say, oh, he's asleep. So, you know. He's, he's, and I was like, oh, okay, you know. <clears throat> they kill him, you know. The, the very, you know. I did tell him to roll stealth. I was like, yeah, if they get like a one or something. That's when you're like, okay, yeah. So, what's supposed to happen is that if your characters go into the tunnel with like any light source or something i i dm this again and like so like i'll probably like tell you about that one but i dm this again and you know there's no elves no one had like i think it's called dark vision or something elves have a thing where they can see in the dark in D, D. so this this trap meant nothing this trap did nothing so basically what happened was is if they go in with a light source, a trap pulls, and it's probably one of my favorite traps that I've ever kind of like run when it's working. Basically, a massive stream of water 
comes in down. And they have to make an acro acrobatics check. To which I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Because <laughs> I have dark sight or whatever it's called. It doesn't work. They can just go in. Because I go, oh, yeah, is anyone, like, you know, opening it, you know, you know. Lighting a torch or something, both players go, oh, no, we can see in the dark. It's like, God, okay, cool. No, that, you know, so that trap kind of just immediately dies before, like, even thinking about existing into this world. Which I don't really mind. It's, it was kind of funny, to be fair. Anyway, so, what happens then is, whilst everything is happening, whilst everything is going on, they go into, like, there's a little room with, Three dogs, three starving dogs. No wolves. Are they wolves or dogs? I can't remember. I have like the like the thing over there. I could just go look, but I really can't bother at the minute. So I th I so like you can like feed them stuff, and so like Red Arrow is like, oh hell yeah, I want to tame a dog. I'm like, okay then, yeah sure, go for it. So I say, you know, I like describe. Oh yeah, they look kind of starving and stuff. Garfinkel, you will see Garfinkel do like the Jojo like smirk, intelligence and stuff. Una reverse card, so many of the, the things I do, <laughs> and it's somewhat funny. So he goes, Oh, feed them, that might you know help. So you know, feed them and stuff, you know. So you know, they give them some of their rations. Right, like, can I just say though, food in DD for players, and, like that. I was in like a D&D thing, D &D thing, where, like, we wasted all, like, without, without me saying we shouldn't do this, nearly wasted all our gold on, like, alcohol, I don't know why, it's weird, anyway, I get it, roleplay and stuff, so, anyway, what happens is, so, first one day, you know, he goes, oh, okay, animal handling, boom, failed, I go, okay, yeah, he's, he's grateful for the food, but he just doesn't, you know, you know, and walks off. <laughs> Next one. Animal handing fails. Walks off. <laughs> to which, to which, like, we somewhat kind of, uh, like, at this point, kind of expect uh, Red Arrow to, like, somewhat fail. But, you know, thankfully, he, like, succeeds. Uh, he did actual hurt. I think I did, like, if they got, like, 10 or lower, it would fail, and, like, I think he rolled, like, a 9 and a 7. And I think, like, he got 16 on the last wolf. So, yeah. Anyway, introducing to the party now, Riley. Riley is a little, uh, little, like, it was kind of hard to, like, not DM for Riley, but, like, kind of, like, use Riley in combat. Because it's a wolf. Uh, and, like, Riley, not gonna lie. If, if you like Riley the wolf, not gonna lie, both me and the players forgot about Riley so many times, and I'm probably not gonna mention them all, like all of them, but like it would be like Garfield would go, oh wait, can't we use Riley? And then like both me and Red Arrow will look and go, oh yeah, we <laughs> there's a wolf in the party now. But yeah, this is Riley the what Riley the wolf. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so they make it to a different section, this is like the prison section, uh, where they, you know, fight off more goblins and stuff, to where they, you know, find Sil Sildar, I can't remember, it's such a, uh, I think if I ever DM this, like, story again, I might change the name of it, I have DM this, like, once, and I'm gonna DM it again, which, I don't know about the, the other time I've done it, because we only made it to this bit, we only made it to Sildar, I might DM it again and maybe change Silla's name. I might, you know, tell the tale of, you know, uh, another thing, another time I DM this, because, like, not gonna lie, it got funny. But uh, anyway, they find Sildar. Now, something interesting I found out is that, like, either the DM is supposed to say, oh no, he dies from exhaustion, or he passes out. It's up to you what you do with Sildar. Is what I somewhat found out. What I did was like... So... <laughs> Garfinkel says, oh, is he fit to fight? To which I'm like, oh, wait. 
and like the book doesn't tell you about this. You know, the book doesn't say what you know what is that. It's like it kind of gives you a choice. There's a lot of freedom with this campaign, though. That's one of the things I like. It's one of my favorite campaigns for like new players or like just as like a size for something. I'm there going, huh? Because I have also watched videos about this, and like so, some of the videos I watch like don't actually go into detail about Sildar. He has like he has a room at like an inn in in you know, Fandolin. Later on in the story and stuff, and like basically, if he dies, if he's dead for like if they find him dead, you know it's their room now. If he's alive, you know he tells him stuff. It doesn't actually say if he's fit to fight or not, so I go, I guess. Now, there is, like, I think it's called a common person, or, like, I think it's called a commoner or something like that. There's a, there's a thing in a book where, like, it's a person with no armor, base attack and basic defense, I think. So we had, so that was his stats. He's missing all of his armor, by the way, and his sword. So he, ha he has to use this, like, really rusted, tattered, like, goblin sword so they make it you know progressing through the you know the the hideout and stuff and i go oh yeah this that and there first and then like they come to like the big bat and like i really like this 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 um this little boss he's called, i think what is his name he's a bugbear and he's called clav and there's been a, you know, there's two ways you can DM him, as, like, this, like, really, like, stupid, like, person that, like, thinks he's, like, really, like, big stuff and stuff, or, like, how, like, one DM I saw, like, people had him as this, like, senile old bugbear that, like, used to be very skilled and stuff. I did him as, like, the village idiot uh, in, in this one. In the other one, I didn't. They didn't even reach Clark, sadly, though. And he has this white wolf called Ripper, which I think is pretty cool. There is, like, something I don't like about him, but I'll say that when we come to it, which won't be in this part. Anyway, so... A little, like, you know, conversation goes on, like, oh, why are they doing this, blah, 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 and they were hired by someone. And then the, the big fight begins. This fight... <laughs> Was the most strangest fight I think I've ever like done. So basically, do you know how Sildar has basic defense? Clog crits him. Clog legitimately crits him. So, so he instantly kills him. Sildar didn't even get a turn. He didn't even survive one round. Didn't survive the first round. Just instantly dead. Which baffles me. He baffles me. But yeah, so they go Sildar and so you know I go, Oh, the mines or something like that. Because, like I think Sildar knows about this. So basically in the Lost Man's Fandel there's like a mine basically. Uh, that that's the end game of it. I'll go more into detail when we actually come to the mines, but like he gives hints about like a mine. So <laughs> They kill Ripper and they, they kill the other two goblins that are kind of like guarding the entrance. And so, with Clog, I decided to make something really funny where like, so I described him like lifting up his hammer and then bolting because there is a, there is a way, there's like two openings. So, in the, in the book, unless I misread it, he, he, if his health is really low or is like halfway low, he will try and flee into the exit to the second exit so that's what i did to which <laughs> garfinkel runs down and goes right i'm gonna track him and i'm like what <laughs> he's like yeah i can track him i think gundar's a ranger i can't really remember what they are sadly uh that's maybe something i should like look into for the next part and so like i'm like oh this is gonna be really embarrassing if he if he succeeds this he doesn't, because, like, it was kind of, like, a tie between them, so I decided to do, like, a little dice roll of, like, who would win, and, like, Clog kind of won that dice roll. So Clog gets away. So, <laughs> they now have to, like, figure out what to do, and so, like, I go, oh, yeah, you can still go to Fandel Fandelvalent, where they're supposed to go. 
and so like they decide to go to Van Der Vlint because like you know they want to see if they can get paid and stuff. They go back to the um the cart driver, which is called they no joke. This cart driver for some reason plays a bigger story in like in like the the side quests than I thought he would have. <laughs> He's got a name called Dave. We called him Dave and stuff like that. And you know. I don't know why, don't know how, but Dave, like, starts getting more involved with the party in the side quest, which I might do, I might not do. But anyway, so they ride to Fandelvalin, to which I talk about how, oh, you see, like, nearly dots around the place of, like, these people in red hoods and cloaks. This is the, I think they're called the Red Band. This is the Red Band. This, so... Fandelvalin has, like, this weird, like, gang problem, where, like, a group, like, this massive gang of people have kind of, like, somewhat, because, imagine, like, I think it's called, like, Clockwork, or something, Clockwork Orange or something, I can't remember, but yeah, they kind of, like, run the town secretly, kind of, like, taking out, taking it over, so, <laughs> they, like, discuss, and they find out that, um, they, so they found out they've taken Gundark, so you kidnapped Gundark, to something called Cragmore Castle. To which everyone is now like, oh yeah, let's go to Cragmore Castle. And so, I didn't get that far in writing for Cragmore Castle. So I don't really know what's in Cragmore Castle, unless I wing it. And I'm not really confident about winging it. Uh, so like... I have to now DM like, oh, you hear a mysterious voice saying, oh, you should probably help Fandolin with their, with their little problem, because like, the DM didn't get that far into beating the book. <laughs> so they have to help Fandolin. I don't know if it's optional if you help Fandolin or not. But anyway, they help. So, I go, oh, okay. They do some side quests. Uh, one with like a banshee and stuff, some with orcs. I don't like how I did the orc encounter. And I think if I if I could if I had the option to go back, I would change the orc encounter. Because I did not like how I do it. I'll probably make that that its own separate video because it's one of the I will admit now, it's one of the worst encounters I think I've done. But anyway, so one encounter that I did is where you can learn about the red bands and stuff. So, you, it's basically, I go, oh, okay, you go to a pub and you see, like, some of the red bands kind of, like, drinking and stuff. And, like, they talk to, like, a dude about, you know, the red band. To which Garfinkel gets up, walks to the red band, sits to him, and starts, like, talking to himself. To which I don't know if you're supposed to do that or not, but I'm like, screw it, it works. <laughs> so now he's just becoming best mates with the red band. So... They get some information, like, their leader is called uh, Glassstaff. They nicknamed him Glassstaff. In the book, they nicknamed him Glassstaff because of, you know, he has a glass staff. He has a, you know, a staff made out of glass. Uh, they learn other things about, you know, Cragmore Castle and stuff. And they learn that they, they have, like, a creature. They also learn this from um, the farmer. Because there's a, there's a side quest from the farmer. And what I saw on the internet is, like, you can, like, you know, have hints of this monster with the farmer's child. Like, oh, they hear about, you know, what you can hear. Because, like, next to the farm, here's, like, a map of Fandolin, if I can find one. There's the farm, and then there's, like, a tunnel that leads into the Red Band's, like, secret base. That the, So the Red Band's secret base is underneath this old destroyed mansion. Which there's, like, and that's one of the entry points, it's, like, a little cave. But that's where also where this monster lives. So anyway, they see the you know the red band. I think there was like four of them like drunkenly walk back to their base, and so you know they tell them stuff. And this is so they won this entire encounter with only having to do a minimum of three fights that don't even last that long, and it hurts. <laughs> Not even three, I think two. Yeah, two. So they follow them and they, you know, go down stuff. So they're now in, you know, the red band, the red banner's kind of like home situation. 
And I'm here thinking, okay, this is going to be really cool. Again, like Lord of the Rings in, like, the mines and stuff. And, like, you know, I can't remember the Lord of the Rings music. Like, they're fighting through their way and stuff. No, they fight, like, the first room, it's like one of the first rooms has, like, this little, like, bed chamber where all the drunken red banner, red bands just sleep. And so, like, Garfinkel wakes one of them up. To which they're about to fight, and then, like, Garfinkel goes, Oh, I'm gonna, like, you know, tell this guy who I am and stuff. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, oh, I'm the dude they met in the pub. I'm like, okay, fine. They're friends now. Totally cool. Totally fine. To which, now, <laughs> taking him to glass stuff, and, like, you know, because he, he wants to join the Red Band. He goes, oh, yeah, I want to join the Red Band and stuff. So, like, I'm like, okay. So, you know, they, they walk and stuff, and you know, they meet Glassdoff. But before that, there's a room before Glassdoff where there's this little mouse, and he sees him and, like, scurries into another room where Glassdoff is. This is Glassdoff's familiar. And so basically how it's set up is, if the party, like, goes into that room once they've done, like, killing stuff, the, the mouse is, if they don't catch it, the mouse goes into that room and alerts Glassdoff. And so now he has a moment to, like, kind of prepare himself. And there's like a secret wall slash door where he can escape. So, you know, if there's trouble, he escapes and stuff. Which, you know, doesn't need to happen because they've got, you know, three red bands with them. So, I'm playing it off as like if like the master said, oh yeah, three red bands are there and we have two dudes and a wolf. So why would Glassdoff be worried? You know? Either he thinks that they're prisoners or something else. So they they you know, they talk to Glassdoff and stuff it's like, oh, okay, and like, you know, they get these red robes. These red robes will become important later. Cause they found out something pretty funny. Um so they, they explore more of the thing. There's like this little cavern, this little like cracked cavern bit with like two bridges. Where the monster lives, and I describe how, like, Riley kind of notices something as they then do, you know, I think it's called perception. They do a perception check, so oh, you see this, like, one green eye, and it's kind of weird. It, like, looks at you, and then it dots away, and like, it appears somewhere else. And it does this couple minutes. Now, something interesting with this is, I'll tell you what it is in a minute, but, like, they start hearing voices in their heads now about you know what kind of items they have in their pockets and stuff they somewhat like, like you know garfield said we should probably ignore it for now because it doesn't really seem to be doing any damage to us they walk in and so they come to a section this section has three skeletons and coffins and stuff now they get out when something you know enters the room so they go oh yeah you see these coffins these black these three black coffins as they slowly open revealing two skeletons uh, three skeletons <laughs> Now, these skeletons were made by Glassdoff. Something interesting about these skeletons is that they won't attack anyone if they're wearing the Red Banner cloak. Which they are. So there's no point in having this encounter. So, they just walk on. Minding their business. There's no reason for them to be there then. <laughs> there's no reason. So they go into the next thing and they find you know, the prison chamber where like... They see a woman getting tortured by one of the, you know, red cloaks. And, I think, you know, a little girl in one of the cells. This this encounter lasts for, like, three rounds, I think. Because you got two elves, one wolf, and also a woman beating on this dude. So it's, not, it's you know, not going to last quite long. But, yeah. That was over in a second. I don't think he even hit any of them. Anyway, so, you know, the woman thanks them and tells them that if they ever go to Thunder Tree, there is, she used to run a small, tr you know, shop, and there is a, um, a necklace. Uh, and if they ever, you know, go there and find it, could they please return it and stuff. So, like, they start planning stuff. They go, you know, other places, and they find this little goblin, uh, being yelled at and stuff, and he walks out, looks at them, sees the red cloaks, and you know, just assumes that you know they're part of them. Walks away. They look into like the room that 
you know, this little goblins, you know, come out of this. They, I describe how they see three bugbears, one wearing an eye patch. Uh, Garfinkel, I don't know why Garfinkel, but Garfinkel's got like a weird vendetta now that is like character arc where he's gonna find and kill Clark. So he goes, Oh, is any of them Clark? And like, No, none of them are Clark. It's like, Damn. <laughs> you know, character arc, character progression. So. The, so they go back and talk to the goblin. This goblin's name's Droop. And, like, depending on how your party reacts to him, he can become, like, a good little helper, or just another just mindless, like, faceless thing that they kill. They do the the first option, luckily, because, like, so Droop is supposed to be, like, this tortured, like, little goblin that those three bugbears uh, take the mech out of him, and even the red banner takes the mech out of him. And, like, I say, oh, you can already hear, like, red banner calling his name asking for more ale so there's like a little section where like fill the like rum barrel barrels and stuff that they've you know they've taken and stuff and ale barrel at barrels she's there filling up kegs and stuff so they go up to like, you know droop and stuff and they start talking like oh hey we're not actually you know red banner stuff we're actually here to like take them down so they ask droop some questions stuff like that blah, blah, blah. droop's down for it at this point i love droop by the way droop's one of my favorite kind of goblin companion things so they ask questions mostly about you know what's over there because this is like kind of near to where the creature is so this creature is called a nothic one of my favorite D, D creatures i'll let you like discover what it looks like but it's like this weird like imagine like golem or something with like a singular like one eye that's green and so you can kind of like somewhat like do what you can with this i've just watched videos about you know it and so what some people have done is, like, Nothics really like magical items because of their backstory. Again, I'll let you kind of like look at their backstory because I won't ruin it. Their backstory is really cool. And also, they like to find secrets and hidden things. So this Nothic is basically kind of like Gollum, where he's, like, obsessed with magical items. And he's got, like, a little box of, like, healing potions and, like, I think he has, like, a scroll or something. But uh, Droop and the Nothic have kind of, like, have, have this, like, mutual friendship. Because both of them get, like, picked on by the Red Banner. So, they, a couple minutes later, they meet the Nothic and stuff. And so, um, basically, the Nothic is kind of there for Glassstaff's staff. Uh, so, Glassstaff of Glassstaff. He's, like, kind of, like, I, I don't know, like, why the Nothic is there in the book. So, I just said, uh, like, so, basically, the Nothic, like, Glassstaff has kind of cursed him to stay in this cave. Which the Nothic is somewhat fine with. He just wants Glassstaff's staff. Droop, so, Droop wants to just overtake him. So the Nothic kind of shows them where the secret door is to you know, Glassstaff's area. The reason why Glass, uh, the reason why the Nothic hasn't been attacking Glassstaff, hasn't tried to kill him yet, is because you know, on you know, I say like, oh, on his own, the Nothic wouldn't really be able to stand a match. For Glassstar, this is going to sound really ironic at the end of this. But anyway, so the plan is that Droop will go capture the mouse. And the Nothic, Garfinkel, and Red Arrow will go attack Glassstar. So, you know, Droop w w wanders off to go, you know, where the, the mouse is. To which, you know... Everyone goes attacking, and, you know, so, again, we've got a singular wizard versus two elves, a wolf, and a Nothic. Now, can you guess which one kills Glassstaff? <laughs> it's the Nothic! The one character I was, like, really hoping wouldn't kill Glassstaff, because, again, like, the Nothic said, you know, oh, Glassstaff is way too, like, powerful and stuff. Out of everyone, the Nothic was doing the most damage to this, to this, to this character, and it's so. <laughs> I'm there, like, oh, cool. This is gonna look so dumb. Like, ah, yes, he's way too powerful. Me meanwhile, kills him. So, in like, you know, with the thing, Glassstaff can like bargain with them, saying like, oh, you here for the bugbears? They're over there. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, you here for like that woman? Oh, blah, blah. I don't have the key for her. Blah, blah, blah. Which they've already done. 
I'm not saying they, they like, they, the way you should DM it is by the book. It's just, you know, because this is really funny. Even I will, like, get a chuckle out of remembering this. But, like, I'm not gonna lie, it wouldn't make sense in, sense in the story. Or, like, because, again, you know, I know that, you know, Blastoff doesn't know that they've already saved it. But, like, it makes this guy, who's supposed to be, like, a genius sorcerer dude, well, like, such an idiot. <laughs> when he's like, ah, yes, you're here for these people that you've clearly met and or saved. So, they learn that, you know, he's been about, like, you're like, oh, no, he was supposed to get a, a map. So he had a deal with Clark that he was supposed to get um, Gundar, which he did, and he sent him off to Cragmore Castle. So now there's, you know, there's even more um, reason to get to Cragmore Castle. They find an invitation by someone to go to Cragmore Castle and stuff, but they don't know where it is, so like... I'm not saying like, like, oh yeah, DM thing, oh, you, you don't know where Cragmore Castle is. Oh. No, they just don't know where to go. Um, <laughs> whilst this is happening, Drew bursts in, shouting, I've done it, I've killed it, ha like, holding it in his hands. And so, there's like an ongoing joke now where like, if they were like a couple minutes off, just can you imagine? Just droop bursting into the in in the room, saying, "I did it! I killed it!" Whilst Glassdoff is like, they haven't even attacked Glassdoff. He's there, like writing paper or something. Like what he was doing originally was like sorting out paper because he, you know, sorting out this invitation that he got to go to Pragmont Castle. <laughs> and like, it still like brings like a chuckle out of us, like now and then. But anyway, so what happens is so they defeat it and over time with those bugbears though. If they defeat Glassstaff and stuff before it, the book just says, oh yeah, they, the bug bears just disappear and stuff. So Glassstaff is like, kind of like the boss for that bit. So what happens is that, you know, the bug bears disappear. They find out that, you know, Glassstaff is dead because they kill Glassstaff. Uh, they give the Nothic the uh, crystal staff. Uh... Tell all the guards, oh yeah, get in there, the, you know, they don't have their powerful wizards anymore. Uh, and I like, oh, like, they're kind of scared of the Nothic at first, because he pretends to be Glassstaff, waving this, like, this, like, glass rod around and stuff like that. And either the, what happens to the Red Band is either they get killed, uh, you know, get you know, executed, put in stocks, or community service and stuff, depending on what they've done. Uh, and, yeah, and they find a note uh, from... You know, an individual to glass off. I do. I uh, print. I'll chance. I'll go get it. Quick, give me a minute. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Uh. Right, I've got it. So they find this note. I actually printed it. I'm not gonna lie. I like one of my really favorite things to do is like with props so they find a note uh, my spiders in i don't know what that says neverwinter tell me that strangers are due to arrive in fandolin they can they could be working for the dwarves capture them if you can kill them if you must but don't allow them to upset our plans see that any drown um Dwarven maps in their possession are de delivered to me with haste. I'm currently on, I'm I'm counting on you, Daron. Darana, don't disappoint me. And it's signed with a black small spider, which I'll like talk about that probably when we get to that. But yeah, so now they kind of got to figure out, you know. Uh, one, how to get to Cragmore Castle. Two, the location of Cragmore Castle. And find out who this mysterious person is that signed their signature with this, like, small black spider. But I'll leave that to the next one, because this is where, like, we finished that session. But yeah, this was all done in lockdown, by the way. And it was really fun, because, like, you know, it gives us something to do in lockdown and stuff. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, I don't know if I'll be, I'll, you know, after this, like, 
uh, campaign because it's a very small campaign. I don't know if uh, I don't know if I'll tell any more like D and D stories or something. Maybe I will, and maybe I'll tell like the very short story of like the other one. But yeah, anyway, see you guys later. Bye.